All right. Hello, this is Christian. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to validate a web form and using the control component uh, web form. So here's the app application we've been working on. For example, if I go to the app flight, remember that this form here uses the control component. So when you validate, you want to see something like these here. OK, and um, I want to show you how to do it just your own custom way, as opposed to using a library or any type of hooks. And then in a separate video, we're gonna go back and you know do another one using one of the uh, libraries. All right, so let's do something like this here. And I'm gonna do that using a demo as, uh, example only. And then by using, you know, by watching that and, and, and see how that's done, then you can come back here and then see how it's, you can actually accomplish this. Okay, so uh, let's go to the ID over here. And uh, this is the flight application. Uh, I already have a demo here. If you remember, I have a form before that I used to validate some, you know, simple game uh, characters and so forth, or uh, user games. And first, I'm going to go to the index and update this to load the, not the app, but to load the form, okay? So it's going to load the form instead. Let's save that and close that. If I go back, you should see that now it's actually loading this demo form here. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's not validating. If I put AAA here, um, you know, it takes AAA. If I do AAA again, right, no validation. If I put a negative number, for example, it, it takes that as well. So we wanna validate that a user uh, cannot have duplicate usernames. Uh, maybe also has a minimum and maximum number of characters. I would do that as well. And the Galaga is, um, this game is a drop down, so I'm not gonna validate that. I'm, but I do wanna validate points, uh, just that we don't allow negative values. And I'll add another field uh, over here for the date. So how you can validate data as well. And we'll add that maybe like a, um, an event data something, okay? So let's go back and update our form just a little bit. Now also, I, you notice that this form here has two components. I put here, let me collapse this. I have an app component, which is the root component. I have an add form component here as well. It's a child component. It's in the same file. And I don't like that, okay? So I usually wanna put that into a separate form uh, uh, component. So let's do that. Let's move this class add form to a new component. And to do that, you just basically, um, easier way is just copy this. This is the form, right? So I'm gonna copy control C, control V. I'm gonna rename this to, um, and uh, I guess add form is fine. Okay, so this is the add form and I'm gonna remove the add component here. We'll keep the child component only and it's called add form. So we're gonna, we're going to export the add form. Okay, and everything should stay intact for this one here. And then we save this, go back to your form and now we're, we're gonna remove this entire child component. So much cleaner and, and it's not too big. And you're gonna have an error here. It says add form is not visible. Um, the quick way to fix this is of course you have to import it back here. So do that, you just you know click on the name of that form anywhere it is I think and press control space bar and it will show the little pop-up and hit enter and it will add that for you. Uh, also make sure you fix that here. I should, I should have put it in the, end, in the end of the word. So let's do it again, okay? So when you see something like this, if you need to import, put your cursor at the end over here Control space bar, enter, okay? And that will import that for you automatically if it's correctly, if it's not just fix that. And now error goes away and everything should still be, um, you know, uh, as before, save that, go to your form and make sure it's still working. And as you can see, it's still working fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some changes. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna touch this form anymore, right? Remember we're passing data from the global, uh, this parent app has a data field it's a list only. So eventually we're gonna store all the users in here. So, uh, you know, it, it's gonna lose something like this, right? Of uh, user AAA and the user DVD and CCC and so forth, right? So these are usernames only. And we're gonna validate uh, this form data uh, based on the user here, okay? Or something like that. This, this should be called user, I guess, but we call it data, so that's fine. All right, so this is the form they're gonna use. And so let me open this up. Now I'm going to uh, change this a little bit. I don't like my code to be too long. So I'm gonna re, re, um, rename this, actually remove this and we're changing to the arrow functions. Okay, so this is the one that we're gonna use. 
change our error functions here. So it has the automatic binding for you and you don't have to do that binding up above, okay? Um, yeah, just those two, okay, great. All right, and then the state, we have the state data here. This is local state just for the local component only because eventually when we, you know, when we add the data, we get the new user, we're gonna push uh, this information, this entire list up to the parent, right? So the parent actually, I should have, it's not, not correct. It's gonna have a copy that will look something like this here in the global space. So actually it should be uh, something like, like this, okay? That's one user and then two user and, and so forth. So it will look like that when we add the data a here user B, for example, like that, right? So it will look like that inside this uh, data object. Okay, so um, I'm gonna add another field down here to our form. We have the points and let's just copy this and we'll make it right below here. And uh, and what should we call this? I think I uh, wanted to call it event. So let's add the label here, add event a date, something like that. And the type name will be, um, I guess, call it event. The type is not a number, it'll be date, okay? If you don't have a minimum maximum here, um, I'm gonna remove that. And the data will be coming from data.event. And yeah, so that's it for that date, right? So it should be a date format. Um, the minimum max maximum here, you can leave it as is like this. I'm gonna change this as well. Because if you set this to minimum max, then you can have negative points, which is great already. But I'm going to show you that you can actually validate these. Okay, so let's remove these um, uh, minimum maximum, so it doesn't have them in here. All right. Um, oh, actually, I move. I remove one thing. That the type should still be there. Let's remove just the minimum maximum. Okay, so that is our form. I believe so. Let's go back and see what errors does it have. So here we go. Uh, it's a little bit uh, over here on the right side. I'm not sure why, maybe it's too long, but that's okay. Okay, that's 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 fine. Um, uh, maybe it's too long. Let me see if I can change that a little bit here. This is the length of, um, yeah, if I call it 50% uh, or something. That's okay. All right, that's, that's not gonna be a problem. Uh, that's why I'm gonna have to spend time to change that. But as you can see, I have this data and you know when I do that, I'm going to add the date as well. But we do want to we want to validate this state. Okay, we're going to add a new um, property to the state because we want to manage the current state of these uh, the error state of these uh, fields. So let's go back in here. The form looks good so far, and the state. I'm going to add another state here, and um, so it's going to be called. Um, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I want to validate uh, each of these fields. So I have another property call like validation uh, requirements or just valid recs, I guess we can call that. Um, but I'm gonna add a function here to do, to do that initialization for us. Okay, so instead of doing this way here, I'm gonna call a function down here to validate, I mean, to initialize it. So we call this um, um, init uh, state or something. So use the error function. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll call a constant data. It's equal to this guy right here. Okay. I'll pull this, move that down here. Okay. And this function will be called, will be turned like this dot init init state. We call that to um to initialize the state. Okay. So this function will return an object that looks similar to the state here. So that's my default uh, um, uh, const my data, and I'm gonna have a um, another constant called valid rex for requirements. This would be an other object. It is object can be include all the things I want to validate the requirements, like the minimum maximum for each of these fields. And also, I want to add another field here. Let's add it um, the new date. Thing. It's called event, and we'll set it to just uh, blank for now, okay? So those are the four fields that I have on my form, right? So the first thing I want to validate is the user, 
So if we hit the user, I need to set a certain requirements. The first thing I want to call is I want to make this field as required. So notice I'm not doing anything using uh, HTML. I'm using just React methods, my own custom way to validate this. I want the field to be required. I want a minimum of, let's say, three characters, a maximum of, let's say, no more than 25 characters. Um, I also want to handle errors. If there's an error, then I want to put an error message. Uh, maybe this is for like the, the minimum maximum characters. You can call it error message, call it error max. I don't know, I should call it error message general. Leave it blank. Also want to um, <clears throat> have another error message for um, maybe user taken, I'll call it taken and again, put a blank. So that's uh, the things that I want to uh, validate for my user. So we do the same thing for the similar to the other ones, right? So the game will be, I just leave it, um, uh, you know, blank really, it could be required. It's fine, but it's already in the drop down, so it'll automatically be selected. We're not gonna do much with that one. The points, I want the um, just required, and and you know you can set minimum, maximum, but we're just gonna call it not zero, so I don't care about maximum. But it is required, and I'll also error, put error message if it if it's negative, right? So you put an error message key there. And then we'll go to the uh, event. This is the date, so we also want to be required. And you have a um, the error message. It will be like the date is if the date is not entered correctly. Uh, if it's blank, it cannot be blank. And then we don't allow you know date in the past, right? So error message. I'm gonna say past date is also blank. Okay, and then finally, I'll, I'll do one more, is a key. Notice I put it here in the previous example, I talked a little bit about an error message here. There's an error message in the global space here. You can use that, that's fine, to validate. But instead of putting in a global space, I'm gonna attach this as another key to the validation requirements property here. Okay, so it stays with the state, and I have to use that over here. So I'm gonna add another one here called error, and you set that to false. Okay, so that is my uh, validation requirement for all the fields. Okay, so I don't need this anymore. Remove that. And then finally, I want to return it, right? So return it so that my state will look like this. What do I need? I need an object of the data and the valid ranks. Okay, that is the state. So if you were to, you know, move this up here like this, it will look like that. And then this will look like this. I'll just show you. That's why it's kind of ugly to do this. Look like that, right? So notice I it looks like that. Okay. That's why it's it's too it's too complicated to see. Okay. And later on I need to reset it again. I miss type points here. Right. I need to reset it again in my data. So it's gonna be a lot of work. So therefore I create another, right? So you create a function to do that for you and it's much easier. So I have a point mistyped in here. All right, so that's my state. And then, um, so down here, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna check my app, make sure it's not broken. If it is, we'll have to fix it. Okay, it looks so far so good. It's still submit. I mean, there's no data here. As you can see, it still works, right? I put a negative number and no validation, I put a date in here. Um, I didn't add date yet, but uh, you can see that's still working so great. All right, so now let's go and uh, fix some things in here. My submit function, um, when I submit error, the date, I need to include uh, the set state. Okay, so when I set when I set the state here, I'm not gonna set the state like this anymore, right? I'm gonna call the, um, the function to reset, okay? I'm gonna call this function init to initialize it. So now I'm gonna turn this off and I'm just say, um, you know, this, that's, actually, no, it was, it was okay. I, I mean, inside here, this is not gonna be this anymore because I have two different properties in there, right? I have a user and the uh, value rex. So I'll just call this function called this init state. You invoke that function and it will return 
a new state or actually basically resetting to the original state in here. Basically, that's it. Um, okay, so that's that. And then the output down here, let's add one more. The output, notice we only showed, um, I think in the parent form. Yeah, we only show the user and let's add the other thing here called e at um, event. Okay, so now we have the event object added to that form, right? So you should it should show up the show the data as well as you can see here. So I put a some points and then that date. Okay, you see that date right here. Okay, so four things. Uh, I did not choose the game for some reason that did not come through, and we need to figure out why. Well, I did come through. Um, okay. Okay, so we want to fix that. Uh, somehow it's not coming through, but it, it, it should be fixed. All right, so now let's go back to the form, add form here again. Okay, so let's do the, um, the validation part. First we'll do uh, the, so what, we're not doing this like live, you can if you want to. So on the unchanged, you can validate as you go, but I would validate only after I submit the form, okay? So when you, when you handle, when you click the submit, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, do the following. So I'm gonna create a function down here. Instead of putting all the things inside here, it's gonna be really big. So I'll call a function called validate um, form. Okay, so again, use error function. So what happens in here, right? A few things. So I'm gonna call this function right in here before I do the error. So again, this error is no longer there, okay? I don't have the error, 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 a message anymore. This error is coming from the, the value rex. So it's becoming from the state that value rex dot error. Okay. It'll be that error here. And because it's false, then um uh let's see. Yeah if it's if it's false then it's not gonna validate this form. Okay. So so let's see if that's true. If I go back and you can see that it's not going, it's not passing data over. That's why it's, it was not um, added, right? Well, it did in a way, but it's not supposed to. All right, so, I mean, let's finish this. When I handle, when I validate the form, um, let's see, when I handle the form, what do I need? I'm gonna get the data from the global data, which is the app data, right? So if you remember from the app JS file, this data here, you pass it down as a child to the child, not not that one. Uh, no, in the form, okay? So this data here, we pass it that to the data, that child as its data. So I'm gonna get that from the parent because that is the, the single source of truth. So I'll call that, um, G data is coming from this dot props dot data. Okay, that's the global data. Also get a copy of the local data. So const um, call data from this state dot data. Okay, that is this guy right here. This is the data right here. Okay, I also need a copy of the requirements as well. So again, I'm gonna do another one. I'll call it const, I'll call the same name. Okay, value regs. Is equal to this dot state dot value rex. Okay, so I have those three copies. I can use that to do it in here. And um, before you be okay, so before you begin, make sure that every time when you load the form, you validate, right? You have to set the error message to false because if it's true in the previous state, then it will be true. We don't want that. You want to reset everything, everything to false all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right away before I forget. I'm gonna set the error equal to false. That means that we assume there are no errors. Okay, that's the default initialization part. I also wanna get the data from the state data here, the users only, a list of users because I want to validate, validate users. So that's the first thing here I'm gonna do, validate user. Okay, so what do I need? I need uh, a copy of the user only, um, just for, you know, easier to, um, you know, to, I guess, to, uh, um, 
uh, validate into performance op operations. So uh, I'll call it um, uh, const users is equal to the G data that um, I'm gonna all the users, right? The G data that map use the map function to return all the user only. So all the uh, user return all the user that user. Maybe it's confusing. Let's call it uh, um, object object user. Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm going to get a list of all the users like A, okay, B, and C, and so forth. All the usernames only put into the user's list. It's a list or, or an array of that, right? So once I have that, then I can do some validation. And you can check if the current user in the data here in the form, it contains the data that user is in this list or not. Okay, you can do that in multiple ways. And um, you can use the index. You can look for the index if the user exists in there, or you can look for use the include function Maybe one of those would be easier. And I'll use the include function, okay? Um, so I'll say, if the user that includes the name of the data that user, if that is true, then I have a duplicate, right? Otherwise, it, it should not be duplicate. <clears throat> that means that, okay, if I, if I do this, let me go to the browser, I can show you really quickly. Um, so I'll go to the console over here. I have a bunch of error. That's okay. I'll fix that later. So if I do this, if I do a is equal to that, all right. So here's my a down here. And if I put a that includes, you know, b, you see that it's true, right? If I put b b b, it's false. Okay. So that's that's how that's what I mean. If I if the user is called apple and it's in there, then that means it's included. That means it's it duplicates. The other method I showed you what the index. So if a dot find index of um, the for every for every uh, value value dot um, value is equal to the uh, let's say a then it will return a zero the position of zero right? a is in zero position if I do a c then you get a position of two okay if I do something else not there you get a negative one right so, uh, oops, you get a negative one, you see, you see down here. So you're checking if it's a negative one, then you're good to go. If it's not a negative one, then it's a duplicate, right? So it, either all those options will do for you. That's what I mean by using the includes. If it's in there, if it's true, then I have a duplicate. So therefore I have an error. And I'm gonna set the error for this user dot error message, or maybe error taken, saying the error taken here, so the user is taken. It will also check the minimum as well. So let's do that first. The valid rex dot user dot error taken. I put a message saying user already taken. That is the error message. And I'm gonna set the error flag to true. Okay. okay. If that's if that's not the case, if it's not taken then chances are, you know, once I run the first time and updated the user, if it's already and not taken, then I want to re-update the taken error message to blank, right? So that's all I'm doing. So we set it to empty string. If you don't do that, you will see the error message stay there all the time and you don't want to display that. Okay, so you can see this pattern for all the other types. Um, so that's for the user of the taken. I'm gonna copy this and then we do again down here. This is for the user of the length, right? This would be, should be easy, right? So I'm gonna care about the data here. I'm, I'm just concerned about the user data here. Data user, if the length is um, less than the minimum requirements, value rex that user that minimum, right? If it's less than that or if the data the user length is greater than the value rex that maximum user that max, if that is true, then that is an error as well, right? So you can say a uh, user username uh, must be 
um, between uh, you know those two characters. You can you can make it uh, more dynamic using this way between uh, valley rex dot user dot minimum and valley rex right rex dot user dot maximum. Okay, so something like that, right? Between three and five characters. A uh, user must be between five. Uh, okay, that's enough. And then otherwise, so it's not taken, this will be the error message. And then again, we'll set that to none. If it's not error, yeah, we put that there. Okay, so that's a user. Cool, huh? We can test that first to see if this works, okay? So um, let's save that and um, down here, when I validate the form, it's not going to show that error message, right? Let's see if it's correct. I hope there's no error messages. If I submit, right, you can see that there's no data if I put here. There's, there's no way of knowing that, okay? So I have to, you know, do something, give it to the user, right? Display to the user and, and so forth. So let's go back. Now, in our input form, the user here, when I do the control, um, I need to put the message here. Um, what I do here. Okay, I need to check the, the rack. So I'm gonna go up here and get a local copy of the rack as well. A valid racks requirements. I don't have to tap that many, many times. Okay, and I'm gonna, um, so in the, Username here, uh, the value that the user handle change. Okay, that's fine. Now I need to display that the result back to the user. So right after the input here. Okay, I'm gonna check to see if the value rack, value racks that user dot error message is there or not. If it's if it's true, okay. If it's true, then let me have some data in there. Um, then has an error, right? So therefore, I'm going to do a um, div a class name. Uh, let's see, do I have? Um, I think that's an invalid feedback or something. I don't know. Let's put here valid feedback. I think I have that error message. I don't know where I got that from, but there's CSS for that. Let's see, I think it's probably CSS. Okay, so maybe the error feedback is the class name for that. Um, and then the div. So I'm gonna close the div here. And here I put the message. The message is that the valid rex dot user dot error message. Same thing, right? Just redisplay that message here if it's if it's, if it's an error. That's all I'm doing. And I also display the other one. There are two messages, right? That the error taken, okay? And then same thing here. You show one or the other or both. Um, or um, I think it's one or the other. So let's see if that's the case. Uh, right, so let's go back and see. Refresh. Okay, uh, it's not showing there, let's see. Um, okay, from 74. Okay, so let's see what's going on. I'm probably doing something incorrectly in my code. It's 84 right here. It says value rex, value rex here, state data. Um, change that's fine. Yeah, I, there's nothing here that I can think of as having the error. Um, for some reason, didn't like this part. Let's try again. Value right user taken. Looks fine to me. Let's comment that out and see one more time. I have an error in my codes for some reason. Okay, so if we put a a. Yeah, it's an error. Component changing control input event undefined to be control. 
switch to from uncontrolled to control uh, at line 74 at form. All right, so let's see what's going on here. And let me pause it and find it first. Okay, there's an error here. All right, okay, so I found the error. And um, so it's a little bit tricky. I should have caught that early on, but the error was when we create the data here, I duplicated my, um, I have a, a, a nested the data a little bit too deep right here. Okay, I already have data and have data again, right? So actually this is not correct. Um, I don't need this data part here, okay? We move that data and then we move that extra um, curly brace at the end. And um, yeah, so that was the error. Okay, so that's that's that. And then uh, also we need to um, call the validate form in here. We click the handle submit, we need to call it. So this that um, validate form, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, we call that, we validate the form and it's gonna update the data, show the data here, message here. And then in our form down here, well, I turned this off already. Let's turn this back on. Now, um, I just realized that this invalid feedback is part of the um, uh, bootstrap, um, you know, theme that is come that come with the uh, the you know application. So, this only turns on if you have an invalid uh, type of feedback for a class. It is like it depends on one of the classes, like the invalid class. Then, otherwise, you're not going to see the information here. So, for now, I'm going to remove this one for now, so you can see the error messages. Okay, we leave it blank for now. And so let's see what it looks like in the browser. Okay, so refresh it. Okay, you see that right that the form doesn't validate doesn't doesn't go anymore because I did have an error here. And you can see if I do that, you see the error message comes right here, right here, right? It's a little bit delayed because we did not update the data. So if I take leave it blank, if I submit, it's nothing until I touch the user again. So I never update the data state. So let's do that first. Um, when we submit the data, remember that this rex is part of the state, right? So when we make any changes to the validate form function, because we modified here, here or here or here or any place else, we have to update it. So therefore at the very end of the function down here at the bottom, we're going to set the state. Um, we set state. And in this case, I'm just resetting just the valid rex. Okay, so usually valid rex like that because I'm using the same name as you can see. If that's the case again, just use it, remove that once. So now the up, this will all be, always be updated. Once it's updated, then our form will always be updated as well to show the correct message. Okay, so let's see one more time. So again, if I just click submit, um, okay, reset state is not a function. Okay, I must type that somewhere. I'm pretty sure. Um, this, oh, uh, not reset, I'm sorry, go set state. Okay, so you go again, clear and refresh. And there we go. See, the user must be between three and 25. So they put AAA, and then now you see that goes away. It gets, it gets updated to the data. It puts into the state already. We did not validate the points and the date yet. So you can see the AA is here. If we try to use AA again, I'm get, uh, expecting a duplicate data. So you see it has a user already taken because it's duplicated, right? So you put, um, if you go back to just A, then it go back to the, you know, the minimum maximum. If I go too much, you have more than 25, then um, I probably didn't have more than that, but um, as you can see, it's actually valid. All right, so that's good to go. Now, what I want to show you was the, the error message using invalid. I want this to be in red, also want to highlight this in red as well, like I showed in my actual demo I showed you earlier. And to do that, you need to uh, do uh, two things. Okay, so that when there's an error, then I want to call a um, control call invalid feedback. This is part of the uh, bootstrap thing. So to do that though, you must have, this control must also have a class call, um, I think it's called is invalid, okay? So you must add that to the control. I'm just for example only. So if I do that, and let me add this back down here as well. So let's go back to the browser and you'll see that it should be highlighted red like this, right? So if I do a submit, it should be in red like this and I give you the error message in red. If there's no error message, then you're not gonna see that message. Um, okay, like that. And then you're gonna remove that back to just the 
the, the gray here. Okay, so it's like an if and else part, right? So that means you have to kind of control when should I add this invalid, when should I not? And there are a couple of ways to do that, right? <clears throat> Is you can check, you can use like the the um, uh, um, condition operator and, <clears throat> and so forth. What I want to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to use the function to do this for me. Okay. So let's say I have a function here called error function. And I call it, um, is, is it valid? Is valid a uh, date? Is valid date? Or is valid? Uh, is valid date? That's fine. And I use a, um, I'm going to, And in here, I'm going to return. So this class will be either like this, like this, right? Or like this, right? So that means I'm going to call this function here. This function will return either this, right? Or a return, uh, return just this. Either one of those. Okay, back to this one here. So in this case, I'm going to call the function call um, is validate. And I need to know, because if I do for every other field, I need to know where to, to inject this message to, right? So it's coming from the user here. Everyone has a different field name. So I'm gonna pass to this function, uh, the user name, call, uh, the field name, and then uh, what type of error message am I checking for? So for the user, I'm checking for the error message, which, this, which, is, um, which is the user, uh, what I put it? Yeah, the user, the error message or the error taken, right? Either one of those. So I need to know both of those. Some only has one, like the points, but the error message and the date, they have their own pass parameter here. So this is the same. Let's say I'm using this for the default, which is the maximum maximum requirement. And this is another, another field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two parameters to this function. One is the user, the other is, um, you know, it's possible that it has an error called uh, taken, right? So that is another one. And how do I check that is over here. So I'm gonna have, the first one will be like the, I call it the key. The second is maybe uh, called the field. And it's possible that I might not have that. So I'll set the full value to null, just in case that it doesn't have any data. So how do I check that here? <clears throat> so I'm gonna check, um, so if the uh, the value rex, okay, that's this guy right here, of the key, if it's the the error message is true, then uh, return is invalid. That is one case. Or if the value rex of the um, key, and I can't put like the error taken right because I don't know. Because you know this only works for the input. What about the points? What about the date? It has a different feel, right? Most of them have the error message as the major, uh, the similar keys as you can see up here, right? Message, message, message. But this is unique. A different field has a unique value. So therefore, that's why I pass in the second parameter to this function as called a field. So in that case, would be instead of taken, I use it as the field. Again, lots of ways. This is one way to do that, okay? So I'll pass in the user, that is the key. I valid that user, that error message. Okay, I valid that user, that field, which is in this case error taken. If either one of those has an error, then I'm gonna return this. Otherwise, I'll return this. So this is the else. Okay, so that is my function to do that part here. And we'll see if this one works, okay? <clears throat> So let's save that and go to the browser and refresh the page and submit. As you can see, it loads the function and it knows that it needs, it needs three characters or more. If I put AAA, it's valid now. It's gonna, it should take it. As you can see now, it goes up to the parent and we display the data here. So the data is now active, it's live. If I do it again, the two errors, right? must be three characters or more. If I do it three characters, it duplicates already, it should have the other message. And here you can see, All right? So that is how you would solve this problem. And we're gonna do something similar to the date. 
and uh, did the points as well. So now that now that's been taken care of, let's go and do the other ones. Okay, so we use this function to uh, solve that as well. So the class will be class name will be applied here instead of control. And this yeah, the game I don't I don't believe the game because it, it's it's a drop down of the points so the points. And I don't have, I don't have the second error message for that, so I can leave it blank. I just remove that. Okay, it's just the error uh, message. And the same thing for the date down here. Uh, it's going to be the uh, date, what called event. And then the other one is called um, error pass date or something. Okay, that's the other field. All right. So now I'm going to go up here and copy this again. I'll copy both of these. Put it down here to the points right after that. I only need one for this one, okay? The points only need one. For the date, I need two of them because one is like invalidate and, and the older, um, old date. So it'll be event here and then event, not error taken by error pass date. And then I want to display the same message down here as well. Oops. Okay, that's for that. And this will be event here, event, event, not user, should be event. Okay, so that's that's good for that one. Up here, this is the point. So I'm gonna put here points, error message, and uh, also here points. And this will be also point, not user, okay? So event, event, error pass event, uh, points, points, okay. And points, error, points, points. Okay, <clears throat> right, great. So that's pretty much it for that one. And um, because we never validate the points, the points that you're not gonna see the error messages here because we didn't do that yet. So let's go and complete our uh, validate form uh, function. So we got that user and the things are here. So the next thing here is gonna be the points, okay. This is a, a simple one, right? You just wanna make sure that the data is um, not, is not negative. So um, it's very simple. So you can do something like if the data that points is less than zero, that's negative. And then when I want to, when I want to set the message, I'm gonna copy this again. I should just copy and paste here, it's the same. The uh, event, I mean points, and then we set it to true, and then the points also be set to false if there's no message. So we we'll say uh, points. Um, say points cannot be negative, right? That's the error message, and then that's it. <clears throat> so I'm going to copy this, and we'll do the other one, which is the event. Okay. So validate event date. Now it's called. Uh, and so in this example here. I'm going to go ahead and set a default date. As you can see, there's no default data uh, form. It's just called blank. So I'm going to go up here and create a variable and I'll call it um, default date and call it whatever you want. It's going to be a string, let's say 2000, that's January 1st. That is the default date. So I put that inside here. The event date would be this that default date. And, and the program will automatically update that for you, right? So um, if I go to the form, you're gonna see that now, see the date has been populated for you. So this is a default date. Now, anything after this day is valid or including that, that day. Anything before that will be invalid date, okay? And if you don't include any date, uh, in this case, you know, it, it's not there, but if you happen to set it differently so that you can set it to just empty string, if I do this, like that. Okay, that is considered an empty string, right? So therefore it's invalid. So again, those two uh, parameters. Um, and so down here, we validate two things. Um, check for the um, uh, empty string, okay, is very easy. If the data of event is empty string like this, that means that date is not set, then therefore we'll put a three error. Make sure they're actually strings. Therefore, we have a date event error. Um, event here, let's say, I'll put here something like a date is required. 
it's basically required we set it to true and then we set the error message to blank do another one this is for the date as well but for the passing date now a couple of ways to do this you can validate the date uh, using the date uh, object or use the date as a string okay so so two ways and in this example i'm going to use uh, just a date object so this date here is a string right this is the default date up here you have to convert this to a date object so you can compare you can count you cannot compare date object against date string okay so what i'm saying is this example here and i'm going to create a um so the new date new date of the uh default date default date that's what i have if that default date is um greater than the new date of the data set in that field we call the data event right remember data event is the actual date inside the form okay if it's greater if the default date is greater than that then it's illegal right cannot be um it's in the past so i'll say date cannot be in the past otherwise it's good to go and so we, again we, we uh, the error message would be error pass date, then error. Okay, I think that is all for this one. And then we update the data here, uh, not paste, but passed. Okay, let's give it a try and see if this works. Here we go, just submit. And we got that one here, the other two are not there yet. Um, okay. Okay, so these two are, I mean, these are actually valid, right? That's why there's no error. If I go and put a negative one, you see that cannot be negative. This also cannot be set to true. If I put a date in the past, let's say at 1999, okay? So you see all those error messages are now being validated. And that's how you validate your data. So I put AAA, that's taken. If I put AAB, that part, um, that part should be okay. Oh yeah, it's already taken as well. If I put DB, that goes away. These two are still cannot be validated, right? I mean, cannot pass. So I put a, a, a 34, that's good. Now the date cannot be in the past. If I go and change the date to the future date and uh, it has to be not in a different year, right? Different year, let's go up to 2000 and Boom, so there you go, okay? And let's do another one if I put like, you know, uh, delete that, just press the delete key, okay? That is a different type of error. You see that date is required. If you see that, because this will be treated as an empty string. And so therefore you must have a, a date. So again, if I go in the past, um, you know, it's beyond the default already, so that's good to go, but this is good, this is not required doesn't meet the requirement and then now everything looks good and there you go that's how you validate data using this um approach so again um um so this function here the purpose is to, to go to validate each field each uh requirement for that field make sure they match and as you can see the error message here is all set to true right i did not say anywhere else to be false if i do that it's incorrect so we end up either false or true initially you force it to be false that there's no error message you now and everything looks legit but if one of these ever set to true then the entire thing is now false right the error i mean the error message is there so therefore the form cannot be submitted and make sure you also update that requirement as state so that you can see the current data being rendered to the view when you display the messages here okay so I hope this is helpful. I know it's a lot to take on, but um, uh, you know, we watch it, kind of study again how this is done, um, and and that is again one way how to validate your form using your own uh, approach. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.